We need to find this place or we'll be late. Make a left on Astrology Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant right. It should be right here at 4th, 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 Spirit Way. Oh, turn, turn, turn. It looks like we're late. Yay, we're on time. The James and Kelly Show. Great, let's start the show. Kelly, we got to change that animation. Haven't we found that building yet? <laughs> no, we're lost. We're probably still lost. <laughs> I think How we should you? do one where we're floating from heaven and we come in. I think we will work on. Yes, we will do that. That'll be the next idea. We'll do one. I think from that's heaven. a that would be a wonderful thing. I'm really there. well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Doing just great. I'm, I feel spring is in the air. Oh. I've gotten um, a good sleep. I got to sleep at eight thirty and get up at six thirty every night. Oh my gosh! My, wow, my, what a new schedule. I'm a night owl, so it's a big change. I know. <laughs> so, no, it's right. Good. Things are good, and um, I'm busy with the cruise. You know, my Alaskan cruise is cruising up, and people are so crying. excited about that. I can't really wait. Growing, and each day I'm telling you a little bit more about it. And I'm doing my 28 days of love on Facebook every day. Fun. So, fun. How and great is that? And tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Love, okay. love. It's love. Yeah, I'll be doing a lot of specials tomorrow on Love Day. Oh, and God. giving away a lot of stuff too and doing that. So oh, that fabulous. Sense. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I watched the Super Bowl. I had a lot of fun with oh, that. How was I didn't watch the Super Bowl? Tell me yeah. about it. It was really fun. I don't know football. I could care less, but I like watching the Super Bowl and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It's good. And who won? Uh um <laughs> is there a number? Is there a the Chiefs. The, the Chiefs. Chiefs. Kansas City. <laughs> yes. I actually forgot. <laughs> and and um, you remember the score? I take it, which is uh, no, that's a stretch. And what about the? Um, of course, I'd say how are the uniforms? But how was <laughs> halftime? Was a big. It's always a big deal. It was Rihanna. a big deal. It was with Rihanna, and apparently she's going to have a baby, so that was exciting. People told and, me it's at the dog park. It was Rihanna. Okay. Yeah, it, it was, and I, she was good. She was really good. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. good. Yeah. Yeah. That was Did you fun. see the Grammy Awards? I did watch the Grammys. Uh, that was yeah, a couple weeks ago, I think. I, I didn't really, see part part of it, I kind of liked a lot. Yeah, I would have liked to see that. I know, I know yeah. Queen Latifah. I know a couple of those people. I had readings for several of those people. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, there you go. And I didn't <laughs> see it. So it'd be interesting. Oh, yeah. Melanie says Rihanna stole the show. She was really good. Oh, my gosh. Everybody from New... Oh, we've got Cheryl from New Mexico. 38 yeah, a lot of people. Chiefs. Wow, thank you. That was a close game, Carol. It was, was a close game, <laughs> Another oh commercial with J-Lo and Ben Affleck. Was there a good commercial? Oh, yeah. That was pretty funny. Yeah, the Dunkin' wow. Donuts coffee. It was pretty funny. Yeah. You know, that little problem with her and him at the Grammys. You know about that. It's social. Oh, it's it was hysterical. I was watching that. I met them in person, you know. I went no, what ago. was that like? And they first were together. And they, okay. I was in the front in Beverly Hills for dinner, me, a friend. And they came right behind me. And um, I sat down. And then the maitre d' sat, sat them right down next to us. We smiled. And... Um, Within five minutes, they were off to another table, the way in the back of the corner, of course. And just because I'm just me, I was just noting that the whole time he was on his phone, Ben, and she was on her phone the entire time. Uh -huh. And then when we left, um, we left, my friend and I left, and we uh, she, she, we waited for the ballet, and they were right before us again. And they went first, and out of nowhere, paparazzi, like, crazy. Yeah, I bet. Up, hood of the car, but I'm like, what? And they went like, crazy. And they, they left, and I'm like, wow. And then they, they drove away and the paparazzi scattered. And I, and I walked out and said, here I am. <laughs> I'm here. I'm free. It it's shocking, crazy. isn't it, to see it all of that? Crazy. Yeah, it's that's crazy. crazy. They used to they used to stake out at our building. That's insane. And it was uh, I mean, Shirley and I'd walk out and we oh boy, it was it was rough. That's insane. Yeah, we had we had special doors for people to go in to our oh. office because of it. Yeah. And then special doors to leave. Oh, oh, it was invading, awful. Invading your, yeah. invading your private space is like totally, wow. totally. We had clients that were pretty well known, very well known, and they would say, "You have to sign these agreements." And Shirley and I, yeah, agreements to see them it was kind of wild, James. Right. Um, very, it, the very, whole thing was just unbelievable. Yeah, when you're dealing with that type, wow. makes it rough. What's going on astrologically? Because tomorrow's well, Valentine's Day, so we know. So absolutely, we have a couple of really, really interesting things. So let's first let's talk about um, Valentine's Day because this energy for Valentine's Day, it's um, and I'm talking Vedic astrology, everybody. 
Venus, the planet of love, is exalted. And what does that mean? It's exalted in Pisces, which means it's at its considered at its highest vibration. And so for if you are considering being in a relationship right now, this is the perfect time. And this goes for about a month. It's the perfect time if you are even thinking about being in a relationship. And by the same token, if you are in a relationship, it should make you a little closer to your partner. It's, it's a very highly aspected time for Venus. And it's also great for if you don't have a partner, it's great for self-worth, self-care, feeling good within yourself. So it's a really special, special Valentine's Day. And this particular Because it's one. exalted in, in Venus and uh -huh. Pisces, would that also mean that more, maybe more of a dream life? People would have more of dreams or... Oh, absolutely. And and another thing, and I, here's what I believe. I believe because of this exaltation that we will see a lot of babies being born wow. Wow. In a, in, by the end of the year or beginning yeah. of next year because relationships will develop. I, I feel it's very powerful, actually, to bring new souls in because at the same time, Saturn is um has moved into aquarius in vedic astrology that changes the game of everything it changes the vibration and i know that we have talked about you know how this kind of crazy world that we live in with all these different things i think it has a lot to do with the saturn changing vibrations i, I do i think it has saturn a lot to do with it right, saturn's going into aquarius in, in, aquarius. in vedic astrology it's in aquarius and That's that makes sign aquarius very mental. yes very yeah. mental so and um it brings like ultimately it brings amazing forms, new forms of healing and new technology, but wait, Kelly, wait, Kelly, if used for the highest principles of Aquarius, yes. So if the used high, the highest elements yes. of that sign, like healing, invention, scientific methods, great, but also yes. can be used to overthink things and jump into things. And yes. Think, you know, and so the energy is going to feel a little wonky, but yeah. on top of that today of all days, the sun, again, Vedic astrology, the sun <laughs> went into transitioned into Aquarius. So if your birthday is today, February, February 14th till a March 14th, I know you're thinking you're not, but the sun is actually an Aquarius in Vedic astrology. So you would be considered an Aquarius, but the powerful, this transit for the next five or six days, it's pretty intense because of one thing, Saturn is also where the sun goes into Aquarius. Saturn is also combust the sun, which means it's too close to the sun. And when Saturn is too close to the sun, it makes people very negative. So here's my thought. If you were to get into a relationship, let's say you go out and this Venus is really getting you going. I want to go out. I want to meet somebody. You'll probably bring towards you a karmic relationship. So there would be, because of Saturn, you'd probably be some karma here um, going on in the world. Wow. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Astrologically, a lot. Wow. Wow. Well, I, I've noticed a lot more crazy people than usual. Than usual. Have you noticed that too? I, yeah. I've noticed that. I mean, no, yeah. and I'm not going to talk about difficult people, but it's, yes, I'm really outbursts. And I was telling you before about um really horrible incident where he used to live in Laguna Beach. There was a cyclist and he was riding his bike and some guy just came and hit him and knocked him off the bike. Parked his car, came out and stabbed him nine times and he died. And the it's guy awful, was, awful. Had the doctor at the local hospital and the, the driver didn't even know him. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That is amazing. That's road wow. Rage. Like road month. rage. Yeah. Wow. So really? it's not about difficult people and how to deal with them. Yes. And we have a wonderful There's expert. Yes, Kelly, tell us. Well, let's tell. I'm going to tell you about. Well, we have a great guest. It's Dr. Shirley and Pelizzeri. And Shirley, I've known Shirley for 30 years, and James, you've known her for at least the last 20. Yeah. And we've Shirley and I used to have a show together called Both Sides Now. And James, then she left, and now James and I do Both Sides Now and Beyond. I'm but Shirley. <laughs> and with Shirley, and Shirley's a psychologist. She has her PhD from UCLA. As she specializes in trauma. And we're going to talk about personalities. We're going to talk about difficult people. And so let's welcome Dr. Shirley and Pelizzeri. Hi, Cheryl. Shirley, welcome. Come on through. Come on. Uh, come on, Cheryl. You can do it. Um, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Reese, I'm frank. I feel a lot of energy in the atmosphere. I do, too. A lot of energy. Uh -huh. <laughs> My cousin was killed in a collision from the road race. Oh, it's no. Sorry. That's, well, oh, that's... Negativity. I, I don't know where Shirley went, but well, she'll get him when she gets here. Okay. So Kelly, um, astrologically, the crazy energy we're having right now. 
Is it that Saturn? It's that. I think it's it's a combination of things. It's a combination of Where Saturn. Right now. Where's what? Jupiter. Jupiter is still in Pisces and it doesn't transition. It, it doesn't move, change its sign until um, April, about April 15th. So again, but too, that could be dreamlike, more dream. -like. It could be dreamlike. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're making some big uh, changes in the planets in the next month or two again again so yeah there's gonna be a lot of change like in turkey i mean hello. oh my gosh james i think it was over thirty-five thousand that were killed sure i'm sure isn't that just awful right it, it's almost like mother earth just burping up getting that energy right out. Like if, if we look at everything as energy it's like she's got to clean things out and i, yes. I don't think turkey and syria is going to be the only place that there are many more happening i think north japan I think I do think in Europe and Germany somewhere. I just think things are going to happen left and right. I think we're going to see things much faster than usual. I think so too. Yeah, I, I yeah really, I'm with you on that. Yeah, I am with you on that one. Um, well, I'm not sure where Shirley is, but I know we're going to be talking. But yeah, a lot of negativity. That's true. What have you so, done? There she is. Hey. We just where you went. I know. I was going. Oh my god! Am I supposed to find a way to get in there? What am I supposed <laughs> to do? So I started to touch a whole bunch of buttons. Just roll on through. <laughs> you know, I just decided to be late. Whatever. <laughs> I am so happy to be here, you guys. Thanks, Yay! Great to see you. Great to and see you, James. I heard what I was just thinking about it today. Eight thirty to six thirty. I was a huge night owl, and all of a sudden my system has shifted and now I go to bed early and wake up early. And I'm like, what the hell? Who am I? What's wrong with me? <laughs> right. It's so, so you're weird. going it too. Well, my, since my puppy I've had. Yeah. So I have to, that's, that, that's her schedule. Oh, and I mean, okay. You're it's forcing me to get up that early and I do not like it because it goes totally against my nature. But <laughs> me too. You gotta do what you got to do. Extra but, product coffee. I don't know. Well, I'm not doing it for any other reason. It just seems like my biological clock is shifting for some that's reason. Good. Yeah. I think it must happen with hormones as you get older. I'm sure it has to happen. Yeah. Thank types. you for bringing that up, James. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, <laughs> hello. <laughs> when Days going on different, going lower, <laughs> upper, right. Kelly, when you were talking about people are going to have babies, I'm like, no yeah. more oven. I know. Yeah, yeah, oven's no. done. Can't do it. It's a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Shirley, so I'm glad you're here. here. So, so, Shirley, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Why do you think there's so much craziness right now on the planet? Uh, well, I know it's kind of a big question, does it? Yeah. It I mean, from a psychological standpoint, there's that kind of copycat syndrome that happens when one does it, then one would think that it would horrify everybody and people wouldn't do it, but it almost gives them permission. So if someone already had that idea or had the you know rage that they don't know how to control or haven't worked through, then it almost, it kind of almost gives them permission to do it. That's why we see so many happen at, you know, all at once, right? And when I studied psychology in school, I remember they talked about copycats. They talked about like social media or what you see on television. Oh, they, they become stars and they think, oh, they're in the, center, in the center of attention at that moment. I think part of that's in there too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Part of that's in there too. But it is, we've just been seeing so much of it. And, and, and since COVID is over, I think since COVID started, I've, I, I've been watching it so bad. I know you guys it's really bad, but and when I'm really bored. <laughs> I've been watching some YouTube with these people that freak out on airplanes. And I'm like, thank God I didn't have to deal with that. But these people are cray cray. Oh, yeah. Freak out how. Oh, you haven't seen any of those things. People start nice going crazy on, on an airplane. Yeah. yeah. But is that because they get anxious on an airplane or is that because of the COVID and not wanting to wear a mask I, I, and that kind of thing? I think they just get angry. It, it's angry. It's something oh. that's a can do. It's a control issues. It's entitlement. A lot of it's entitlements. I mean, mm. I bought the seat. I'm not moving. Yet you're causing problems for everybody around you. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. But they don't see that. So I think people in general are so much more on edge. And yeah. unless you know and you've tuned in and you've, you know, learn how to regulate yourself, you're just on edge. So if you were operating here and you're operating here, any little thing can take you over the edge. Right. You know, yeah. Right. And, and would you say that's like, you have to have your tools, you have to have a good yeah. set of tools. Yeah. And what kind of tools would that be to regulate yourself? Well, it really is to tune into your body, Yeah. you know, and notice, because your body, it, you know, research shows that your body reacts like a split, split second before your mind knows what's going on. Mm. And so your body will tell you, you know, if your tummy all of a sudden feels tight or your chest feels tight, that lets you know, oh, I just, something just happened that either triggered me or I'm reacting to, or I feel there's danger. And so that will always tell you. And that split second then allows you to choose a response either. Okay. Let me get out of this area or let me, 
you know, this person's driving me nuts, but let me ground myself and take deep breaths. So, you know, I don't say anything. So, so we can that the body is a tuning fork of intuition, right? Complete. Oh, I, okay. I, I got to write that it, down. It, it, that it, was it, so beautifully said. It, it, <laughs> the but body, that makes sense, right? The tuning fork. Totally. The body is the tuning fork. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's, energy. It's, it's reading that energy and it's, and sometimes people energy, I think they see energy and they think they internalize it as their own when it's really not, but they don't know that it's Kelly. Have you run into that with a oh, the yeah. term between whose energy it is? Yeah. Especially when you're a, a empath, an empath, you don't know. Yeah. You don't know whose energy you're picking up your own or whatever. I always have to ask myself, is it me? Mm -hmm. Is it somebody else? What, you know, what's going on? Yeah. You know, yeah. And especially as Shirley, when you're around difficult people, Yes, especially, you know, it's so funny. A uh, client came in asking me, you know, I'm having a feeling about this person. That's kind of an acquaintance, not really a friend, but the, uh, you know, becoming more friendly. And I want to make sure that I'm just not judging this person. And she started to tell me stuff. She goes, but I get such an intuitive feeling to stay away. And everything that she told me, I started to feel it. And I said, absolutely trust your intuition. Yeah. And there was just something, you know, that just some, the little things that didn't make sense. And we tend to not want to feel like we're judging people, but you really have to trust your intuition. Yeah. It's that feeling that we're given. It's an instinct that we're born with. Use that instinct. It's not necessarily in the head. It's in the heart. It's, it's the instinctiveness. Yeah. It's that, yeah. you know, because that primitive days, I mean, it's part of who we are. And it's so important to get connected. I mean, I was so disconnected from my body, you know, for, coming from a, you know, neglect and dissoci you dissociate. So you're completely yeah. disconnected. But that connection is so important. The first thing was when I first learned it, you know, uh, studying somatic experiencing in 2008, but just even noticing your feet on the ground. Okay. It's you know, you, you don't think about it all the time, but the moment you say, okay, my feet on the ground, all of a sudden you feel them and then you connect. You know, yoga is a wonderful tool, talking about tools that yeah. helps connect you with, uh, with the body. Even if you don't necessarily like yoga, it does really help connect you with yeah. the body. Uh, so body grounding and what a third one would you say i'm going to throw this in there what about awareness or objectivity just observing yeah. what's going on not being sucked into it but observing would that be a tool absolutely okay. absolutely to notice what's right going back. on and 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 get a sense of how you feel i'll never forget remember that parking garage uh kel on south beverly mm -hmm. and one time i was getting out of my car and there was this guy kind of just parked kind of coming behind me and there's something that I felt and I just opened the door and I ran down the stairs because I was like on the third floor and he all of a sudden started running behind me, following me. Wow. And so then I, I came out of like the first floor and you can already see people. It wasn't. In, and I pretended I was on the phone or looking. And I go, hey, how's it going? And then he he took a few steps back, got back in and took off. I don't know That's how Charlie. because I'm not a scary person usually. I don't know how I picked up on that something was going to mm. happen, but I was on the fifth floor and there was nobody else around. So yeah. you have to trust your intuition. Yeah. Even if you're wrong, it's better to trust it than to not trust it. I agree. It. Yeah. 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 The more sure. you use it, the more stronger it gets. Too. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Wow. Wow. So but, sure. Tell, let's talk about difficult people. Like what kinds of difficult people are there out there? <laughs> well, well in, my most, common in my most professional expression, yes. there's a shit ton. But you know, it's on a, on a continuum. I mean, it's the garden variety difficult people that I think we're going to talk more about today. And then the really, the, the more, um, I guess we can say pathological ones that are more the personality disorders that is you that and I are going to do the people? are they mental prop conditions with those people or is it also you know, emotional? A personality disorder is a disorder of someone's personality. So okay. that means that it's a disorder of kind of their makeup of who they are. So okay. because it's their personality, they don't know they have it. They're like, I'm fine. It's your it's problem. You. Yeah. So right. Yeah. And they blame everybody else. Yeah. Right? Yes. So it's different than a mental illness we consider, which we shouldn't use that word anymore, a right. mental illness like, you know, bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety. So those don't feel good and we want to do something about it. But that's different. That's more of a um, more of a like chemical, a chemical imbalance yeah. in your yeah. brain. And, and there's medication for that. Yes. Yeah. Personality. It's who I am. It's my personality. I don't give a fuck. Right. You know, if you've got a problem with it, then that's you. That's right. Yeah. Perfect. 
So that's what makes it so difficult because most of the time there's no awareness and without it, you can't change anything you're not aware of. Right. You know, so we're going to get more into that, Kel, when we do our. On February 25th, we're going to be talking about narcissists, surviving narcissist. a narcissist. Anyone and that's, has a narcissist in their life? Oh, oh my God. We have an hour ago. <laughs> it's okay, exactly. I know, right? Yeah. Oh my God. But we're, Shirley and I and James, you're going to be taking I'll, the I'll class too. You know, and there are different levels of narcissism too. You'll yep. talk about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because they're on a continuum. Right. They're on a continuum. continuum. We'll get into borderline sociopath. We should have we'll a visual, hit it all. A visual aid too. So. Yes, we will have that. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're going to have really good stories about each one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we've definitely. we've experienced it all. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I say we're the Jane Goodall. Personality yeah. disorder, right? Because <laughs> we've lived them like them. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Between the two, you worked like what, 50 years, 60 years between two together? Between yeah. Two, yeah, 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 yeah. And if you add my mom to that, because oh Shirley my was my mom's psych assistant, right? Yeah, you know, and then I was, was Shirley's psych assistant. Yeah, I saw her yeah. mother and father behind her. Before I said, James, is, I we're getting on. You... James goes, oh, I have to tell you something. Your mother and father. I, and know. Like, I know. What? I heard you say that. And I went, oh, Lou. I just say God, what I, I say. So probably much. because I'm going to New York. You know, that's probably that's why. Right. That's yeah. why you saw that's James. Yeah. We'll talk yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. right. But definitely, I mean, there are very real tools yeah. to work with, with all difficult people, which we'll get into today, but is specifically well, narcissists. Those three, well. you mentioned the body, knowing your body, the grounding, and the yeah. observation. I mean, those are fantastic. And, yeah. and, and how does that get into, you talked about a little bit earlier, non judgment? Because a lot of us, our reaction wants to be, I'm going to judge that person because if we judge someone else, we feel better then. So we have to really not be able to judge them. We can observe them, right? But we don't want to judge those people. No. So it's a little weird there, right? Because you got to be observant of who they are and their behaviors. But like, can you judge them and say, well, that's the way they are. And it is what it is. Well, I think at that point, you actually have to look at yourself first. Don't you, Shirley? I mean, and say, it, what is going on here? I mean, literally look at yourself. Well, if am I being someone, this or am I being that? Yeah. I mean, if you're with someone like that, then it's always an important step. You know, what about me? Right. Who's someone mm -hmm. like this or wants to be right. with someone like this? But also, there's also that piece, you know, might I be contributing to this? There's also That's, a very yeah. important piece, great, great not point. to blame yourself, but to always look at that piece. Yeah. And sometimes it's just to know that this is who they are. And so then you really have to do a lot of, you know, self-care and boundaries. And, you know, if you have to engage with them on a daily basis, I, I always say, you know, um, know your audience and speak their language. Right. So if it's someone who, you know, is uh, a victim, or, you know, views the world through the lens of a victim or Debbie Downer, and they're always kind of pulling at your energy, right? To know that about them, not again, to go with you, James, as a judgment, but just kind of as a, as a fact. Energetically, that, you know, if you want to be around that energy, yeah. fine. If not, bye-bye, because I don't have time for it. Life is exactly, too exactly. Or, or talk to them, even if it's a parent, talk to them only when you're strong enough to, you know, to enter that energy, that energetic right. space. And something else really I wanted to talk about, which Kelly taught me many years ago, and I say it every week, but she taught me this, which really, really has helped me. She said, James, you know, don't expect that from that person because they're limited. They don't know any better. Yeah. And a lot of these people, they have no clue. They're like third grade level, the people they were seventh grade, and they're at third grade. Mm -hmm. Who we judge because that's all they know. That's exactly, exactly. One and, of the, I'm sorry, go ahead, Kelly. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, one of the biggest mistakes we make is to expect people to act like the we think we they should them. act. Yes. Right. And we need to expect people to act the way they've shown up. And also, Shirley, I mean, it's so interesting because I tell people when you meet somebody, you're not only meeting them, you're meeting all of their experiences from behind you, I mean, the family and their right. friends. Yeah. It's like a moving van that you're meeting mm -hmm. there. So true. They are yeah. today, right? That made them who they are. Yeah. Today. Yeah. And, and let's talk about when people, people have a trouble with conflict, Shirley. They have a fear of if they, you know, if there's a difficult person in their life, how do they deal with that person? Because they're afraid of that they will create conflict. And people are afraid of conflict. Yeah. Well, if you come from a very kind of, if there's a lot of chaos in your family or a lot of fighting, then you want to avoid conflict at all costs. But you're also then doing it at your own expense. Exactly. You know? So mm -hmm. when someone does something that hurt your feelings, to be able to say, wow, what you just did hurt my feelings or that made me feel like you didn't, you know, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. uh, some people won't say anything because they want to avoid conflict. But then the person keeps you know, doing well, it I mean, over I and think over that again. A soul that comes, somebody that comes into your life, 
and, and if they're pushing all your buttons, I mean, you really do have to start to establish boundaries. You have to start to stand up for yourself and you have to learn to deal with conflict. I think conflict is part of the nature of being on earth at this time. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have to understand yourself and understand how you deal with conflict. And you yeah. learn a lot about, about and it gives the other person possibly an opportunity also to make a change in the relationship. Because yeah. I've, I've had difficult people in my life that ironically, through some form of conflict and resolution and coming back together, we've actually been able to be good friends. So I know but, it's possible. Yeah, that's just it. Not you know, with when, everybody, not with a personality disorder. Yeah, those are separate. But, you know, you're absolutely right, because sometimes we avoid conflict, but then we're really cheating the other person out of maybe stepping up to their highest potential, you know, mm -hmm. because we want to avoid conflict. And our highest no, potential. And ours as well, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. So it's not always a great, and conflict doesn't have to be, you know, yelling and chaos and no. it could just be really stating what, you know, your how needs. the person made you feel or your exactly. needs. Or, yeah. Yeah. And, and how they, if you, I'm, I was no. just going to say that if you do it in a way where I always say your side of the street is clean, you do it in a kind, compassionate way, how they respond to it is absolutely their stuff, you know, and that gives you more information about them. Is this someone that I want in my life? How close do I want this person in my life? Right. Yeah. I, I was just going to ask, are there people that, I don't know, they have a projection. They project what they want on that. But they meet somebody and they, they think a certain thing. Like, like for me, for instance, people think they think about me being a celebrity, but I'm really not. And it's like their stuff and they project on other people. So when people meet people, do they tend to sometimes project their own stuff on that, what they want that person to be or? They do. I mean, it happens a lot in relationship, every in relationships, everything that we haven't resolved from our own, you know, relationship gets projected onto our significant other. I mean, it just happens. And celebrities is a big thing. I have, Great you know, uh, uh, some of my clients tell me stories that they'll be walking down the street and someone will go, hey, and they'll say their name, fuck you, you know, and <laughs> what did I do? I'm just at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> you know or, I mean? or the other one is that you'll say hi, as if they know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's part of, you know, because yeah. you see them maybe in your living room every, you know, right. every week or now downloaded for eight hours, right? With, with, <laughs> uh, we used to have to wait a week for the next episode, yeah, but yeah. now oh. you can watch everything all at once, right? So you do kind of feel that you know them, but I think that's, you know, that's part of what comes with that profession and you have to be a little bit more tolerant. And between the two of you, how much of this do you think is inherited and how much is learned or gathered as you live your life? Beha what part? Behave with difficult people, like like in your in your in your makeup, your your heredity. Is there some like some you know some inherent qualities that you're open to conflict more than others, or is it something you learn, or is it a little it's bit? Of both? I think it's something probably both, but you learn from families. So if like my family was all conflict oriented, they oh yeah, they would just you know, and I know other families that you don't say a word. Yeah. You keep it in. You don't say a word. Yeah. And I would walk into these families and I'd be like, <laughs> you know, oh, we don't talk. OK, I forgot. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know the rules. I didn't read. But um, hey, what do yeah. you think? Sean? That was that was more mine. Yeah. Yours I, was kind of quiet. I had right? one therapist that described, oh, you were you lived in an emotional desert. And I went, oh, oh, yeah. what a great way of saying it. But it is. And so what happens is many times, you know, the brain likes what's familiar, even if what's familiar isn't the best thing for you, but it feels safer because yes. I know how to anticipate, you know, like I know how to live in chaos. I know how to anticipate it. It feels safe because I know it. Right. And so many times we'll attract <clears throat> people in our lives of stuff that, that uh, has been familiar when they're not, you know, in our best interest. So that we have to be careful about too. Yeah. So yeah. tell us the different types of, of difficult people. I know we talked about it earlier. You said there's, yeah. there well, you the have like the passive aggressive. The passive aggressive is okay. kind of, I think, the worst because they're not in touch with their feelings and they're very afraid of anger. And so many people are afraid of anger. It's almost like a four letter word. And anger is life force. If we weren't able to get angry, we weren't able in the caveman days to, you know, stop that animal from charging us. You know, you have to get angry to, to protect yourself. And it's just become such a bad name because we, we mix the emotion of anger with the behavior of anger. And those are two very different things. The emotion of anger, I can be unbelievably angry right now and you might never know it, you know, because I don't want to show it as an example, you know, 
how we behave is very different. So people, there are many people that are uncomfortable with anger, so they never get angry. But they'll do things because anger is energy, like every other emotion. You can't get rid of it, even if you ignore it. That I'll do things that just kind of, you know, Thank like you. I always give the example of, you know, I can't stand this person, but I bake a cake for their birthday to show how lovely it is. But I bake chocolate knowing they hate chocolate. But, oh, my God, I forgot. I forgot that you hate chocolate. I thought you loved chocolate. That's that would be like a passive aggressive move. Totally. Right. That's yeah. such a good one. Wow. Right? And, and if they all... put nuts in and you're allergic to nuts, that's really <laughs> then they, bad. Then they really, then they're really actually, mad they want to kill no, you. I actually had a client whose <laughs> husband was having an affair. He was alcoholic. And the, the woman that he had the affair with just kept feeding him alcohol cake. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So then he became an alcoholic again. Yeah. That was really sad. Wow. Was that's bad. A, that's but, a great example of passive aggressive. Okay. Yeah. That's number one. <laughs> yeah. I'm making notes. <laughs> so it's really hard because the truth is that they're not fully aware of it. So when you point it out to them, they can go, no, I didn't, I didn't mean that at all. And they really, at times it's not because they're not fully aware of it. Other than other Sometimes otherwise they are, they're, sometimes they're not. Yeah. yeah. For the most part, I found that they're not, you know, otherwise they'd be sociopaths because they'd be calculating, you yeah, know, how am I going to So they're not really aware of their anger, but it shows up. But if, then if you bring it up, they're saying no. And so you kind of look like the crazy one. I, That's I've at the core. Several times. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you have a big reaction to it and they're looking at you going, what? Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Cheryl. Where does this cut, where does the uh, aggressive, like, you know how a person, and it says some mean things. Like they mm -hmm. just say mean things mm -hmm. and they're trying to be funny, but they're mean. What, do, what would oh, you call Oh, sarcasm. There's Sar a lot like, of, real, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a lot of hostility under sarcasm. And that's I, another it's... person that maybe isn't comfortable saying, wow, what you just said really hurt my feelings. So instead I'm going to say something really sarcastic back that really gets you oh. or that, you know, hits below the belt. Well, what about if it's someone that you just met in a restaurant and they're sitting there and they're, they're yes. nasty to you like, you know, one guy just had a dinner with someone or lunch with some people and he didn't believe what I did. He made some weird gesture about something like, where is that coming from? He doesn't even know me. But it was a sarcasm. It was a biting. I don't sarcasm. like that. I don't like yeah. it. Yeah. It's so hostile. I don't like it. And it's passive aggressive. It's very hostile. Sometimes it's just hostile. aggressive. Yeah. 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 Sometimes. Yeah. And it could be. Mean spirited. Very I don't it's like it. Spirited. You know, yeah. it could it's be that he had a bad experience. You know, with someone, or he doesn't. You know, it doesn't believe in what I do. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't believe in you. Do there's no reason to be mean about it. I mean, you're not. You guys aren't running around trying to convince people. You know, <laughs> so so there's no reason to. It could be part of personality. A lot of times, it's unresolved. You know, um, trauma. You were yeah. not born that way. We might have a genetic predisposition to things, yeah. but truly, the love and nurturing you get in your home decides whether that gene gets expressed or stays dormant. So we're truly not born that way. So if someone is like that, you know, I, I just, the older I get it, 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 they fall into, you know, life's too short. And totally I just don't want to be around people like that yeah. anymore. I just, I, just, I just, I send them love. I just give them love. Yeah. I feel yeah. sorry for them. I empath. I just give them love. You know, I've met people, I just look at them and all of a sudden I start crying because they have no clue about who they are and they don't love themselves. It's like, oh my God. And I just send love because it's not my stuff. You know, we have to realize yeah. It's not our stuff. And what's coming up a lot lately is you can't save people from their journey. They got to go on their journey in their own way. Right, Kelly? We talk about that. We, we talk about this every we day. We want to help them, but we can only do so much, right? You know, and everybody will have those troubling times and relationships and all kinds of things that they have to go inward and do their work with a therapist or with something. They need to do their own work mm -hmm. because it mm -hmm. makes like we, we can't do it for them, James. So we could certainly give them all the information in the world and all the tools. Ultimately, they have to do it themselves. I'm glad that you're saying that you're both saying that because sometimes, you know, I have to remind myself that people are on their own journey and I have to take a step back. Exactly. Oh, you know? surely. For sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I think yeah. I do that because I yeah. the show is gonna meet people and every day. That's their journey. I can't mm -hmm. give them yeah. seat. That's their yeah. journey. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, with, with difficult people also, especially if there's someone in your life that you can't really avoid, like maybe at work or even a relative or something, is to be curious as to why they're like that. And so then it kind of softens it. You so know, would you say to the difficult person that you're working, why, why are you like that? Well, why are you such a jerk? No, to, for yourself. Oh, okay. Because it's very hard to have to deal with someone who's difficult 
you know, and if you have to deal with them ongoing, like work or, or uh, you know, a relative or something like that, to be curious. And that sometimes can soften how it lands on you, you know, and it's still going to be hard, you know, difficult so when you, to deal with. When, but. To be curious, like, I'm wondering if they went through a lot of trauma in their life. Yeah, that I wonder what they went curious. through. I wonder and, what they went through. Yeah, and then really, you know, either prepare yourself mentally before you deal with them because you know you, what you're up against for the most part. Set boundaries. I mean, boundaries is a big one. A big one. And I yeah. Got saves lives. It really does. It, it really does. And um, sometimes, you know, I view people like that in our lives as to give you an opportunity to practice something that isn't easy, like setting a boundary or like conflict. You know, if conflict isn't easy, you know, they're there. I, I, I view those people as there to, you know, help me or help the people that I work with to give them opportunities to practice difficult. You know, you know they, they difficult. Show that our families that we're born into are our greatest teachers yeah. because sure. we're connected to them. So if something within them makes you angry, what within yourself are you not whole with that you have mm -hmm. to look at that you're still angry? Yeah. 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 Families, great teachers. <laughs> oh, so true. Talk to us about negative people, Shirley, like negative people. Like if you've got a real negative person in your life. Well, looks yeah. life like that. There's always pessimism. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that is so difficult because it really kind of brings the energy down. Right. You know, it can really make the energy yeah. toxic. And so either that's what they heard. So it's role model behavior or they've just had a lot of, you know, um, hurtful things that have happened to them. And they've just see the world through those through those glasses of just always like the, you know, the the half half empty cup versus the yeah. half full cup um and i try to shift it just a little bit if i can you know so they'll say something as you hear about um i don't know something negative and then i'll say yeah and did you also hear about that woman that helped the other woman you know so i'll, I'll try to to just because that at the very least that kind of balance the energy because it's hard yeah. to always it, hear everything negative is. I think there are studies done that one negative comment takes tw it takes twenty positive comments to erase that one twenty to erase that one negative comment. 20 really? Wow. Yeah, I heard that from a study that was done. Wow. Um, a couple of great insights or questions people are asking on you guys. Um, yeah. This is from Brenda. Um, how do you how do you decide what boundaries to set? <laughs> well, that's a very good question. I mean, it depends. You know, boundaries don't have to always be told. So if someone, you know, if you share with someone, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be doing this, you know, show for the next hour and someone calls me, well, then I just don't answer the phone. Or if you say, I'm going to take a nap or I'm going to be sleeping or I'm going to go and people call you anyways, maybe they forgot. Right. But I just won't answer the phone at that time. And so that's a boundary that I'm setting for myself. Or you can share with them and say, um, it depends on whatever, what you want what to, the, yeah. what yeah. the scenario is, you know, yeah. but if it, but it, if, if it affects you and if it crosses your own boundaries and if it's taking energy from you, right. Then right. that's how, you know, you need to yeah. set a boundary. If it makes you, you know. feel negative or angry, then or that's exactly the bad or okay. Yeah. Boundary line. Okay. If Here's someone wants question. you to do something right away and you say, okay, yeah. I can't do it today, but I can right. get to it tomorrow. Right. That's an example of a boundary. Yeah. So Kyle Hodges says, I bottle up my emotions. It usually shows in my face, but I never confront the difficult human I'm having trouble with. Why is that? Am I a pushover? Because you don't like conflict, Kyle. Yeah. My first question would be, why to yourself? Why is it that I don't have? Is it because I didn't see my parents do it? Is it because, you know, one of my parents did it too much and I want to be the furthest away from that person. Sometimes we go the exact opposite mm. and there's so much gray in the middle, mm. you know, that we can choose to, to be so. Well, maybe it wasn't safe when you were younger mm -hmm. to, um, to actually talk about your emotions. You know, you maybe yeah. in your family system, you didn't do that, mm -hmm. but I'm glad mm -hmm. you're, you're thinking about it now because as Shirley has pointed out, it's going to be in that body. It's going to show mm -hmm. up in your face. It's, it's going to show up somewhere. Some people get cancer. Mm -hmm. Some people, I mean, it does show up. The emotions mm -hmm. don't go away. Yeah. I mean, it's got a problem with anything. It really yeah. holds things within, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I find, you know, sometimes we don't think about the simplest thing, but I'll say if somebody said something, I'll go, wow, that, that felt mean. That kind of hurt my feelings. And it completely disarms the other person. Really? You know? you'd Shirley, you'd say that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, like, I've done it. I've like done it. it. Or, um, you know, when, when, 
like when someone passes and I don't know what to say, you know, we have this big to just listen. I just want to hold the space for your sadness right now, you know, or even say, listen, I don't know what to say. That's going to help you. How can I best help you? Right. Just the, the most simplest thing, because we go through this, you know, oh, my God, what do I say? And then then I just say, I don't know what to say right now, but I want to be here for you. That's great. Hold you know, something face. like that, right? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. If someone hurts your feelings, you know, it makes me I, I've said this to someone. It makes me feel like I don't really want to talk to you because when we talk. Almost always you say something that hurts my feelings and I'm curious why did I do something to upset you or can we talk about it? It completely disarms the situation. And, but, and then I remember the people that don't, like you said earlier, they don't know they did anything wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, and that puts it yeah. in another category because now you're talking about personality disorders. And, you know, with a borderline or with a narcissist, they're not the problem. I mean, clearly, oh. they'll, they will go like this. They're not the problem. They truly have no clue, no. you know. But you also have to do it because it's the tone of voice. You know, it has to be done in a tone of voice where, you know, That's where right. there's no, there's no, Anger, there's no accusat accusation. There's an art there to it. There's an art to it. You can't do yeah. it when you're feeling it. You know, yeah. you have to do it when right. you, yeah. 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 That's I great, mean, though, Shirley. Really great. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, here's a question. This is from Judy Truitt. She says, I was married to a passive aggressive man who died from cancer. Mm -hmm. So she said, I read Gabor Mate, Dr. Gabor Mate, mm -hmm. about pleasing behavior with regard to cancer. But it, does he talk? Are you familiar with that? I know who he is. Gabor Mate, I'm familiar but... with him. I don't, I'm not familiar with uh, pleasing um, behaviors that. You know, well, that when you're can. pleasing behavior often can lead to passive aggressiveness. If you are a pleaser and you really don't want to be, but you yeah. just, are, you know, were trained to be, or just did it to keep yourself mm -hmm. safe. The I mean, opposite yeah. of that could be passive aggressive well, because it makes you angry because it's never about you yeah. and you're you not know? authentic. It's, right. not, it's not truth. It's All not right. true. Yeah. So you really have to, you know, you really have to, we have it in our society and I know that, that uh, it's been taught that if we think about ourselves, it's selfish and we have to absolutely have to include ourselves in the equation. When we think about others, we need to include ourselves because otherwise we can get, angry or we can't get passive aggressive or we can't get because we're not taking care of our own needs yeah yeah hmm. do we notice more of it nowadays because of covid or the end of covid or people acting out or is it just the way things are now is that the new norm or i don't know what <laughs> what do you think kelly yeah i think covid yeah did a lot of damage to a lot of things yeah, yeah. yeah. it really has to change your clientele i mean the types of clients that you have that you work with or situations have they intensified or about the same? You know, I've never been busier since okay. COVID. So okay. definitely, you know, anxieties were up and, and um, I think there wasn't as many distractions. So people couldn't help but sit into the, in their own stuff and felt so uncomfortable that then they wanted to, to seek help and talk about it. So I think on the other end of it, while we also see, you know, more incidences of violence, we'll also see, kind of a healthy wave, an emotionally healthier wave, because people are more, pe I mean, every therapist that I know is fully booked. So fully more booked. people are actually, yeah. yeah, are actually working through some of their pain because it was nothing else to do. Yeah. Wow. But it's causing a lot of people to act out as well. Yeah. If Shirley, if somebody's looking for a therapist, I always refer everybody to um, traumahealing.org for mm -hmm. somatic work. Somatic. But I know they've been very full. They've been really I've full. They've been really that. full. And then I've been sending them to psychology today. If you go to mm -hmm. psychologytoday.com, mm -hmm. you usually can find somebody there. And I've also been sending them to look for graduate schools. If you don't have a lot of money and you need a therapist, graduate schools right. um, in all states have departments that will, they, they need patients. They need clients. So yeah. Yeah. I think those are great ideas. There's also a few online um, uh, and I, I don't remember the name, maybe Renee can, can research it while we're talking, um, that do therapy, you know, teletherapy online. What do you think of There's teletherapy? There's a few apps. I mean, I do telemediumship, right. <laughs> but yeah. so I know you and Gordon are going to be talking about modern mediumship, James. Yes, yes exactly. So, yeah. What do you think about telepath? You know, especially with, with my... My somatic colleagues, you know, we didn't think it was going to work as well as it does. 
but you can still see the expression on the face. I can still see shoulders if they're up, calm down. I think people are paying more attention to you because they're trying to see this through the camera. So in a way, they're kind of really paying more attention to you than they would sitting in a room looking around. Maybe maybe that's it more. Could be, or I find it a little bit more distracting. I really prefer the face to face, Same. you know, because know. you're in the energy and stuff. But but it's worked really a lot better than we thought it was. Same with mediumship, yeah. right, Kelly? I'd say. Oh yeah. I yeah. was at first I was very concerned, but it worked out really well and get people from all over the world too. Oh yeah. Sharing. Yeah. I have no problem with it. it it's yeah. almost just normal for me at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Here. Some, and Marcus says, I love telemedicine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just don't like the passwords and the emails and the passwords and the portal. Right. I mean, my God, I literally went to a medical office and went and met the person at the oh, front desk. I remember. I can't get into portals. And all that. I just don't do portals. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that. Those I kind of portals, right? <laughs> so, so Kate Yanchenko says, how do you deal with loud and obnoxious Good co-workers? Question. Obnoxious ones. Yeah. See, I would have a hard time with that. <laughs> I would too, Cheryl. I would, I would just, I think I'm I'd right. actually have to say something. I really think I I mean, would. again, giving you the what opportunity. What kind of childhood did you have? They shock you with what they say too. Right. Yeah. It gives you an opportunity to, to again, stand up for yourself, even if they're not going to change, you know, yeah. would you mind speaking well, a little we, softer, please, or something like that, you know, to have a yeah. voice. Maybe that's, that's what they're there for is to give you an opportunity to have a voice. There's not much you can do, especially when it comes to work. Well, and not you only know, that, you really have to pick and choose your battles. You yeah, that too. Yeah. You know, if, but ultimately, you know, ask to be moved to a different, you know, work area at times. I mean, I've worked, I do some executive coaching and I've worked with people who've had, you know, in this case, like a borderline or personality disorder as a boss. And ultimately the best, you know, the best decision for you is to work for somebody else to move departments, because if you can't, you know, some people will say, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize I was talking so loud. And some people will say, fuck you. I don't care. So so but it's important to say something because that gives you the opportunity for a voice, whether or not they change. But it's so funny because you can have people in the workplace and I have and I'll talk about this experience because it was one of the most amazing life experiences. And I hired um, these producers for the TV show Ghost Whisper that I did and they weren't working. I, I hired the husband and wife team. And to make a long story short, after a year of getting the show very successful with public relations with myself and Jennifer Love Hewitt coming out and touring, um, the show was doing well. The producers wanted to fire me on the budget. It was like, wait, wait, wait a minute. I hired- it's your show. I hired you. You can't fire oh me. God. Oh my goodness. And CBS came and said, uh, he, he's not going anywhere, but you might. I was like, and then their mindset, that's what they that's their world. And I guess I was in their world and they took it's just so weird. Wow. I, I think what you recommend about being curious is so great because I will do that without even realizing I'm doing it. I'm like, huh? What what do you mean by that? You were born curious, James. <laughs> the art of discovery. Like it's what? totally I think what what what? Yeah. So Mitzi Carruthers, hi Mitzi, and I think Mitzi is in South Africa or no. Zimbabwe or something. No. I, I can't remember Mitzi, but I know it's one of the two. She says, "I'm catching the tail end. Looking forward to your webinar." So great, Mitzi's going to be Thank taking you. our and it's on February 25th, everybody. Yeah, I want you go to that. It's going to be really cool right. about narcissism. There you go. It's going to be about narcissism, and if you purchase it and you're not able to attend live, we will send you the link once yeah. it's filmed. So don't worry about that. She says, "I'm especially looking forward to." how to help her grandchildren who have a, apparently a father or something that, mm. that is a narcissist. Yeah. So we'll be talking about that, how to deal with that, that specific of, mm-hmm. of um, mm-hmm. your stories. Yeah. When it's in yeah. Family. Wow, yeah. yeah. Cause it's, it's really rough when you have a narcissist or a borderline or a sociopath in the family. It's yeah, very yeah. rough. Tough one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really tough one. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, so L says people get very defensive she said, it's, this is my selfish side. I don't want to get angry unless, you know, it's useless for me to get angry, but people do get very defensive. I mean, I right. have discovered that pretty quickly. Yeah. Like you do get, get defensive, defensive. What, when you try and set a boundary? Well, well, probably through anything. If you want to, they may perceive whatever you're going to say as a judgment or. or Kelly, could it be control? They want to control. control the yeah, situation. absolutely. They don't want to give away control. Yeah. And if you're trying to control that space and, and you're really not, you're just curious or want to find out something else. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 
And Margaret, thank you. I love you. And Margaret's going to go to Alaska with me. Okay, let's talk about Alaska. Bring your dancing ba birthday shoes. Oh, let me tell you, Anne Margaret, I've been with James where he's dancing. He starts in the disco and he's the last one in the disco, unless you're talking about my friend Shirley here. Because Shirley, too. Because Shirley, how many yes. cruises have you been on with James? Guilty. I uh, Two. No, three. Only three. Okay. Three. We went to Tahiti. Mm -hmm. You did the Caribbean. The Caribbean. And you did one other one. Uh, which other one? Was I it Europe or Italy or I th Italy, no, Europe? I think it was just those two because I remember oh, I couldn't go. There was three okay. others. Couldn't go to Alaska, Australia, oh. or when you went to, to, to Europe. Europe. After you did your Alaska, you should go on this one. It's, it's oh, such a great, yeah. great trip. That would be so I'm fun, I'm thinking Cheryl. about it. That would be so fun. It would oh be my fun. God. It's amazing to see that pristine, incredible, you know, yes. part of the planet, which yeah. who knows much longer. You know, um, but yeah, it's really Oh, great. it's so much fun. I was right there Friday the 18th. 25th, my 65th birthday in the middle of it. So I'm going to celebrate. Oh, sure. Oh, got it. Oh, that. Wow, wow, and, wow. And we're going to look forward to dancing with you, sweetheart. Make sure oh, she's going to have so much fun. <laughs> and James, are you, do you think you're going to do a Facebook page for people that have signed up so they can meet each other and then they can yeah, plan yeah. things? I, I, it's on my list of things. It's on your you list. Do. Okay. Because I know, Ann Margaret, you had asked about that. And maybe, oh. Ann Margaret, you could help with it. Yeah, and Margaret, that'd be great if you want to help make that happen. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, I mean, because I know a lot of people that might be single that don't know other people, you know, they can get together mm. and choose different things that they'll do together because there's yeah, so many. Cruises should be done beforehand. So that's yeah. Right. Oh, it's going to be so fun. It's, by the way, it's the most popular cruise of the year. Uh, the travel guy just called me up. He said, uh, August is getting booked fast. And he said that um, if he's done so many cruises. He's all Abraham Hicks cruises around the world. And I've known around 30 years ago. So he's never seen that month a, a ship fill up. Wow. Quickly. wow. Because that's time to see Alaska. So wow. uh, signing up. So if you're interested, for sure, if you are, you know, very interested, you should do it quicker than sooner than later because it, it will yeah. go. We just saw the last cab, the outside cabin with the window. To a friend. Oh. I mean, it's, wow. It's, it's definitely, yeah. Stepping in spirit, we're going to help people learn about the other side, being part of the other side, near, near to the experiences. We're going to have a body experiences. It's going to be fun. Learn spirit about Spirit guides. Our spirit guides the first day. Mm -hmm. best life mm -hmm. work. Yeah, it'll be very transformative. And Kelly oh. will be there. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be there. I, I, I will. still have the picture of I mean, one of the, yeah. <laughs> I still have the picture of one of the cruises that we went to. After you had done James' uh -huh. meditation and thing with the orbs in the chairs. Oh my God. Oh my God. I mean, yeah, oh. it's still my, it still freaks my left brain out. <laughs> and then when you see the faces in the orbs, hello. Oh my, okay, okay, nope. nope. Say that's the last day of the, of the workshop. That we well, that's, that. you take your camera out and you start yeah. taking pictures. It's phenomenal what you see in that room. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay, like, because wow. we're anyway. doing readings. We're going to be doing readings and, you know, the spirits are there. And you remember uh, when I brought my stepmother, Judy, and her experience oh, in Alaska, well, which, was, was, which was so amazing. And I was, Judy, I brought my stepmother because my father had died. And this was the first time she had ever done anything like this. And I said to her, Judy, we have to be on time. We cannot be late. We have to be on time. She said, okay, because Judy always ran late. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, I have to be there early. And so we, anyway, it's a long story short, as we were walking, for whatever reason, and I'm always early for James, always, because I wanted to sit in the front, and always, and this time, I got side, somebody would have to talk to me here, or the elevator didn't work, or somebody had to talk to me here, and every single time, now I'm looking at my watch, and I'm panicked, and I was 20 minutes late walking in, I've never been done that in my life, there were two seats left in the back, and so I said to Judy, like, Oh my God. I walked in. I'll never forget your face, James. And he is, he's looking at me and I'm like, I'm so sorry. And then he starts, he starts, he goes, all right, we're going to start with this exercise. He said, everybody choose a partner that you don't know. Because I was going to just work with Judy, but she was sitting over here. She turned to this woman and I turned to this woman and about an hour goes by. And James said, would anybody like to talk about their experience? And Judy, who was always kind of um, introverted on some level goes, I do. <laughs> And she starts telling the story, which is unbelievable. And the story was she, her husband, my dad, and the woman that she was talking to both died on August 1st, the same no year. Way. The Wait same year? Same oh, year. Better, better, yeah. That's way better than that. That was like 20, when did dad die? 2012. August 1st, 2012. Okay. Second thing was both men were named Lee. No, that Lee is a name. Okay. <laughs> Both men were professional jazz trumpet players. No way. Yes. And both men played with um, um, Stan Kenton. And both men were friends. 
Are from you? The <laughs> now, how can that be? Okay, and you know, my it. dad Just was like working it. that elevator and moving people in front of me because <laughs> totally. nothing gets in my way when I'm going to be with James. I'm like, Don will tell you, I run, I push the door open. The I am not going to be late. It was spirit. And it's that's spirit. what happened. Those two that's... men on the other side got together and made this happen. In fact, it, when we're going, it's the same ship. I'll show everybody once I'm there, the seats. Right, right. Okay? okay, I thought about that this morning. That's I should show everybody those seats where I was seat. And by the way, all the seats on the ship, when you do your, when yeah, we're great. in the big room, they're you know. all wonderful seats. I just wanted to sit up front. But no. <laughs> There you go. Okay, I'll show everybody this. That's Is that crazy. a while? So right. those are the kind of things that happen there. The same birthday, wow. Kelly, as well. They're the same birthdays. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, have the same birthdays. It was really weird. Oh it was my so bizarre. Are we, well, I'm still talking about remember it. Remember, Kel, when you did that reading for the people right next to our cabin? And the boy always communicated with rainbows. And the next morning we wake up and out the window is a double rainbow. Yeah, and we were working with the, the family. It was the I had met them in Maui, on. actually, oh. with you, James. We were in Maui. Oh. Yeah. And they, they went on the ship with us, I think, to Tahiti. It was Tahiti. Yeah, right? it was Tahiti. I did a big reading for them. Oh, it was just an unbelievable oh. story. Yeah. But and we had and granted, okay, there's rainbows in Tahiti and stuff, but we hadn't seen any. No, we hadn't seen and any. And the next morning, not just one, but it was a double It was double a double. Rainbow. It was a double. Oh I have a picture of it. Yeah. God. I still and they, they came knocking on our door. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, oh, my God. It was amazing. Look at Pearly. Hi, Pearly. Oh, oh my goodness. That's his new daughter. That's Pearl, my daughter. Oh, look at the cute. happy face. She loves her dad. Oh, look. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, my OCD is going crazy right now. <laughs> You're what? My OCD is going crazy right now. She's <laughs> looking at my face. <laughs> but it's so cute for you. Yeah, I know. But and I think about it too. I'm like, oh, she just licked her ass now. She's cleaning my ass. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That put I'm, me I'm, the I'm in the middle of that right now, Cheryl. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but Shirley has the opposite. She's got this thing called <laughs> cute aggression. Why don't you explain what that yeah. is, Shirley? Oh, my God. Well, a cute somebody, aggression. Actually, one of my clients, I don't know how we were talking about it. She said, you know, it's a real thing. And I went, really? So I looked it up. It's a real psychological thing where when you find something so cute, you just want to kill it because it's so cute. Yeah. And I get yeah. that way with babies. So I babies. had to keep it away from my grandchildren. <laughs> yes. Did you get that way? I she, don't get that way does. with puppies. I, I don't care. But babies and little kids, I just, they're cheeks. She's I like, just yes. want to rip them yeah. off the face. <laughs> so August now goes like this. <laughs> no, he does. no. And when August, oh my God. I never that, knew that about oh, 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 it's a thing. My, it's, <laughs> and, and with kids, I mean, my poor little girl, which, you know, I've, oh told her I'd pay for therapy forever. She would go, sob, mom, sob, because I would kiss her cheeks. She's so cute. And little August, you know, her grandson would say, Shuri, you're my cuddle buddy. And like, oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, it's just, yeah. everybody's got, see, everybody's got that I thing. I right? about you. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's kids. It's little kids. <laughs> Babies. Any kid. Yeah. Dogs, you can have them all. <laughs> I mean, I never hurt them, but you know. <laughs> I'm a dog park person now. I have only friends in the dog park community. <laughs> oh, it's a thing. I'm just saying. Oh, wait, I have to send you. I have a picture. Our dogs were our dogs of the month of February. I have to send this picture to you. Otis and Charlotte are the dogs of the month. They finally oh, made friends. it. Three years. They're the dogs of the month. Cheryl. <laughs> hilarious. Good for them. Yay. Well, listen, everybody. I'm going to hurt my dog. So. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Shirley. And join <laughs> us on February 25th, please. Yes. So welcome. I was so happy be to be here. Thanks, Thanks Shirley. Bye, Bye James. Love Bye. you guys. Bye. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean, left. <laughs>